once again, it's time for our wide, wide radio program here on WDBC. Welcome to all of you. Today we have a special treat for you. Uh, the author of Station in the Forest is with us on the show today. She is Mrs. Norma Colburn Terrian of Cornell. And I'd like to just read a little something about her before I say good morning to Mrs. Terrian. Uh, Mrs. Terrian is the sole surviving pioneer of Cornell Township came to the area in 1885 from her childhood home in Wisconsin, and she now lives with her husband on a farm in Cornell. Uh, she watched the organization of Cornell Township, watched the coming of every person, the building of every house, and the construction of every road. So I think she's seen a lot in the years she's been here in this area. Along with uh, Mrs. Uh, Terry, and today we have the uh, Cornell Lions program chairman, Mr. Clayton Ford. So without further ado, let's say, first of all, good morning to uh, Mrs. Terry, and hi there. Hi there. Could you move up a little bit closer to the mic? Okay, I will. Now I can hear you real good. Mm -hmm. I know your hubby is listening in Cornell, so you better speak up loud for him. He's sound asleep. He's sound asleep, okay. <laughs> and also, Mr. Clayton Ford. Hi, Clayton. Good morning, Al. Nice to have you here, too. Uh, the reason we asked Mr. Ford to come along with Mrs. Terry is because the Cornell Lions are a sponsor of this book, Station in the Forest. Is that correct? That's right, Al. And uh, maybe you'd like to give the Lions a little plug and also tell us uh, where they could uh, people could buy this book. Well, Al, the reason for the Lions Club uh, in promoting this book is that there's a lot of nice poetry and a uh, uh, history of Cornell in this. And uh, Mrs. Terry has did a lot of writing in, in this way. And we felt that it would be a dirty shame that if this wasn't put into a book form and in the future would be lost. So that's why we, we had uh, the book printed for her. And uh, it's been a good project for you. And you know, as you know, the Lions Club is a service club, uh, service to the community and service to the people of the community. And uh, we just thought it would be a real nice gesture for Mrs. Terrian. And the book is available to all, from all the Lions Club members and uh, from the Terrian family and from uh, Gus Fast and uh, over at Safely's where you get all that nice candy over there. And, uh, and I imagine Al Holtein would see that you got a copy if you asked him for oh, it. Oh, I certainly could uh, lead them to the right place, right? And uh, it's also been uh, printed by... Uh, to offset and they have copies over there that's available so I'm sure that you can get your copy and it is interesting to most anybody uh, even though you may not be a resident of Cornell Township but I'm sure that if you start reading in, reading it once you will not lay it down until you finish it and you don't have to be as we call old to enjoy it you can be young and enjoy it too that's right right well thank you Clayton if there's anything else now that you want to add to the program i wish you would okay well maybe later on if okay i, I know mrs terry and being a woman she'll be talking quite a bit so you may not get another chance that would be fine okay <laughs> thank you clayton ford uh now back to mrs uh, terry and mrs norma colburn terry the author of the book station in the forest and i suppose the best place to begin uh, mrs terry would be to ask you why did you write this book what was your reason to write it well I uh, I never thought of having anything published. Oh, you didn't? Oh, no, no. But all my life I have written things when I was a child, you know, and then I uh, kind of, uh, the years probably I wouldn't write anything. And uh, then after my children got older and, you know, they were on their own, well, then I did write more. But never thinking that anything would ever be published. I never really thought I'd ever get that high up. So just writing, you know. Uh, so just for, for your own pleasure, I suppose. Well, really. yes. I would go outside, maybe and see something, you know, and that was it. I couldn't rest, and it bothered me till I wrote about it. Mm -hmm. see? It's like something you have work to do. And if you do that piece of work, it's just out of your mind then. And that is the way with the, that I have been, see? Things bothered me, a certain thing that I thought would be nice to write about. And then I was kind of cranky and everything. The housework tired me until I wrote that. Then I was back where I belonged, see? In other words, you're uneasy until you get these thoughts off your mind that and on the right. paper. Yeah. That is right. And I have a poem to that effect. 
in this book here too. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe it might be a good time to read that. I'll let you. I'll let you look it up. You know, on this program we yes, have commercials I'll too. I'll have to look it up, and it's short. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what I'll right. do. It tells a lot, though. Okay. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll have a commercial, and then you can look it up while that's playing. Yeah, that'd be fine. Okay. You look it up, then, Norma, and uh, we'll pause for this important message. Special guest today is uh, the author of the book Station in the Forest, Mrs. Norma Colburn Terrian of Cornell. Now I believe she's found that little poem. Have you, uh, Norma? Yes. Maybe you'd favor us with that. At my quiet day, I have to wash the dishes and I have to make the bed and I have to cook the dinner when I would rather write instead. Someday I'll find a quiet place where the grass is nice and green. I'll take my pen and paper and I'll write all day and dream. No one will call for dinner. No telephone will ring. No one will knock upon my door and I'll just hear the birdies sing. And at twilight time, when the sun goes down, I'll come back home again, and I'll start right in where I left off, awaiting on my men. Mm. I don't know how you uh, find the words, but I suppose, as you say, if you're in touch with what you believe in, the words just kind of naturally well, flow. In that case there, I had planned to do some writing that day. Oh, I see. And uh, I couldn't get to it one thing after another. Kept and interrupting. And that's the way I felt. Mm -hmm. And that's what you put on paper. And that is the way most of my poems are written. Mm -hmm. It's the way I feel. See? Well, I'll tell you what, after the program, if you have any feelings whatsoever toward me, I wish you'd write me a little poem. Well, <laughs> I don't know you too well, but I hear a lot of good things about oh, you always. Thank you, it? thank you. Well, I was just hinting, you know, after all, you wrote a poem for Marge Sakely. Oh, she's lovely. She's a lovely girl. We're going to be talking to her on the phone later, so maybe you want to say hello when I call yes, her. Yes, that is very nice. She is very lovely. Okay, and then we'll be back in a minute, okay? Okay. And just relax a little bit, because right now we have to make another cherry tree to our wide, wide radio guest today, the author of the book Station in the Forest, Mrs. Norma Colburn Terrian. I did want to mention uh, there was a cute notice the kids at Cornell School made in color, and it said, uh, notice, they put this up, I suppose, on the board at school. Al Holteen of radio station WDBC has asked Mrs. Terrian to be on Wide Wide Radio, so I guess they want everyone to hear her and says she'll read some poetry from her book. I thought that was kind of nice, didn't you? Very nice. And the children in Flat Rock, each one in one of the rooms, they wrote a poem themselves, made it up for me. Mm hmm. That was kind of nice, too. Cute. You've got some uh, budding poets on your hands. Maybe they'll take mm -hmm. your place someday. They huh? all like them because I write Christmas stories, you know. Uh-huh. And uh, they're uh, honest, you know, the kids are. I noticed, too, that your poetry is a little patterned, a little after Edgar Guest, I believe it was, who writes in a form people can understand. Well, I don't know any better. Yeah. I never had education enough to write beyond that, see? No, I don't think that means everything oh, either. No. Uh, some of the poets uh, that write poetry today are kind of far out. You can't understand what they're talking and about. Do you know, when I was going to high school, I had, I've never stayed at school in my life. Only that one time I had to stay a whole week every night because I couldn't learn to recite a poem. Really? Well, yeah, and I never learned it. He let me go. If I didn't tell the other kids, he let me go. He That's said. kind of strange, isn't it? And now you're writing poetry. And you've got a book out, Stationed in the Forest. That's right. And that's how much, uh, excuse me for asking, how much does this cost? Three dollars. Three dollars. Okay, mm -hmm. and it's available at, uh, where is it, Sakely's? And where else, Clayton, was it? It's available to all the Lions Club members, uh, the Terrian family, anybody that's re related to the Terrian family, uh, Gus Asp and uh, the Sakely's. Very good. I just thought I'd give you another plug for it, because I do want people to read this. I think it's a wonderful book. Uh, you're the only person left in the township of all the pioneers who first came there to make their homes, yeah? That is How does that make you feel to be the only one left? Sometimes I feel as if I own the township. <laughs> no Maybe sooner. you do. My father was the first organizer. He was supervisor for about 13, 14 years as long as he lived up here. Uh -huh. And sometimes I really feel as if it does belong to me. Well, now, would you mind telling me how many years you've been in this world? Well, of course, I am going to be 80 this coming summer. My goodness. I wish I could stay a little longer. There's a lot of things I'd like to do. But... Well, who says you're not? Oh, <laughs> I think you're going to be around quite a while. You know. Well, you look pretty perky to me this morning. And I think people will be better off because you were here. I really well, do. Well, I hope so. It was a little bit hard to get out so early and get up here and wondering just how I would get along, you know. You think it's hard to get up in the morning? I'm 39 and no, I can't I get, get up. up but I don't have to get up, you know, and... Uh, do things like this, you know, and wonder if you're going to make a mistake and somebody's going to criticize you. I don't think you have to worry about that. Oh, no. I don't know. 
I think you're doing a swell job so far. And right now, I'll stop and remind our listeners that they're in tune with WDBC in Escanaba, Michigan. And uh, it's your CBS voice for the Upper Peninsula. Uh, could we go back to your childhood a little bit? Uh, what do you want? Okay. Uh, how old were you when you first came here to this area? Well, the first year I was born, my father came into Escanaba. See, I was born in July. He came here and put up the powerhouses, mm -hmm. superintended the building of the powerhouses. And the Northwestern hadn't been too long this far north, see? Well, the railroad wasn't here yet. Oh, yes. Oh, it was here. But I don't think that the, it had been too long. I haven't looked those things up, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, then after that, he left again. He went back, and, you know, my father was a mailman, see? Oh, he was? Oh, yes, I, that's what he was. And I was raised in the shingle mills, you know. I could pack shingles as well as the men. I'll be darned. Oh, yes. How many uh, brothers or sisters did you have? I've got, uh, I had, there's five girls and one boy. But the boy, when he was 18, was the oldest in the family, and of the, you know, and the children. And he died. Mm -hmm. And that was, a, well, that was my first trouble in the world because I, you see, there, he was the only boy, and the girl used to scrap with me quite a lot. And I'd follow my brother fishing with her. And after he died, well, the world was all lost for a long time. It was awfully hard on you, I bet. Oh, yes, because the, I didn't all get along with the sisters. Now, how did uh, the Cornell area look when you first came here? Oh, my. Oh my. <laughs> I imagine it was kind of a wilderness then, wasn't it? Uh, yes. Uh, there was a... See, my father had the mill, and we had lots of little log houses on that side of the track. That would be the south. <laughs> and uh, little small, you know, log houses. And his uh, workmen, a great many of them were coming from Canada. Mm -hmm. And my father was French. He could talk their language, and they liked to work for him, see? And then, you know, Canada, well, the English had taken over. And they didn't feel that the, the French and they were used very good. So they all came, so many, you know, see, into Escanab and all the surrounding places. And then on the other side of the track, there was a Mexican island just for starting in there, you know. And they had a row of log houses. I know a lot about log houses, uh -huh. you know. A great deal. How about, the, were there any wild Indians or anything? Uh, the Indians, let's see. Oh, that's such a long story. Uh, but they were just uh, going out, see? Uh -huh. They had, uh, now we have Hunter's Brook there. Hunter's Brook hasn't been in very good this last week. And the river there with a the little boy drowning, but it's mm. there, you know. And, uh, right, we can't help those things. And these Indians, uh, they lived, uh, they had their teepees on the banks. Not so much the river, it's Hunter's Brook. Mm -hmm. And it was a beautiful brook. And I wrote in somewhere in my book that it was the prettiest place in our township. And I really felt bad this week, not only for the people in it, but for our river and our Hunter's Brook. You know what I mean? Yes, I know. And I have a beautiful poem. It's in there, too, about uh, the river. I call it the River of Gold. Mm -hmm. And that hurt me. But the River of Gold was in such terrible trouble you know this last week well we hear about this uh as yes. far as pollution too uh, that our, our beautiful rivers are being polluted oh, yes, that and is that right is sad isn't know. it that's very sad and uh, the river of gold is really that poem has been read in many of the churches mm -hmm. and